What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Settlement Survival. This is a game that's heavily, heavily inspired by Banished, but it's actually got a lot of the bells, hooks, and knobs that like some of- So if you really, really mod out your Banished, you'll probably end up with something like Settlement Survival. It's going into early access pretty soon, and so they've been sending keys on out to content creators, reviewers, previewers, all those. I checked the game out for about an hour before recording this video, and actually there's a lot of stuff in here to chew on. It has a, in its release version in early access, it has a sizable amount of content. And so while the sort of sterile title of the game made me sort of nervous about it, like, I've noticed that from the title, sometimes you can tell, like, what the quality of a game is going to be. And Settlement Survival is a very, very simple title for a game, and so I was like, alright. But actually, everything's put together fairly well. It sort of surprised me. So we're going to dive on in today, spend about 30 minutes with it, and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this, I'll have a link for you, you wanted to get it, or you wanted to wish list it, I'll have a link for you down below in the description, as I always do. You'll also find a link to all of my socials, like Twitter, Twitch, and Discord, just in case you wanted to get a hold of me in other avenues. Let's dive on in. We've got limited time to play with. Uh, so we can start off in Africa over here. Okay. So we can go with the map size. Where else can we start at? Can we start, like, anywhere? Okay, so we had a South America right there. We've got an Australia right there. I wonder if actually where you are on the map affects the things, like if you're actually like in a coastal region. Hey, there's a Saudi Arabia. All right. All right, well, after scrolling through it for a while, I don't know if you can actually be up in kind of like the northern hemisphere, in all honesty. Uh, I've gone through about 100 seeds now, just as a test. I edited it out, but I went through a lot of seeds, just kind of clicking to see where it would land. Almost universally, it lands in South America, it lands in northern Africa, it lands in Australia, or it lands kind of in Saudi Arabia, I guess. I haven't seen a single, after like a gazillion clicks, I haven't seen a single one come up like in Central America, for example. Or I guess that's a small piece of land though, so there's probably a limited number of seeds, but nothing in Europe, uh, nothing in North America, pretty much just kind of around the hemisphere of like Northern South America, Northern Africa in there, and then Australia pieced on in. So, I don't know, maybe I'll fiddle with it a little bit and see if I can actually get one seed to come up, up above. But for right now, for the interest of playing the game, let's go ahead and just dive straight on in. So, in this game, our goal is to run a colony. I guess I didn't do a good job of explaining that. Uh, we have a colony, and we have to make sure everybody is fed and clothed and has all the things that they need to survive. I really like that water area right there. I do wish during the settlement placement part there was like a mini map that you could see so that you get a quick just synopsis of like the topographic topographic features of the map that you're playing on. So it looks like we've got like a river that connects on into like a larger kind of pond or lake right here. I think doing a coastal village sounds really cool, so I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, let's go ahead, and I don't want to use up those rocks right there. Those rocks are going to be important. Uh, we'll put this right... We'll see, now I'm being run off the point of where I want to be. There we go. We'll go up against this little mountain right here, dude. We'll call it Mount Kickass. Yeah, dude, we live next to Mount Kickass. Alright, so here we are. Our little settlement has been founded. 21 citizens are homeless. In general, I think that homelessness is probably one of those things that people are not going to be very forgiving about. And so we need to clear out kind of an area where we can build some stuff. I'm going to tell them to collect all these resources because I need like a big open space where I can actually make buildings in. And so I'll queue that on up and you just go to this menu down here. You've got your commands for your villagers. And they'll go around, they'll start chopping trees. The entire game is presented in a high saturation, uh, kind of lo-fi, I guess low-poly way, which I actually think is a really, really good art scheme to go for for any kind of budget indie game that you're trying to develop. Low-poly just works. People like low-poly. It takes less effort and then on top of that, people seem to just aesthetically enjoy low-poly and I do count myself among their number. I'm one of those people that I definitely like it. Uh, we need some houses to go down out here. So I'm going to have this face kind of the central square and we'll kind of like stamp out our first burb over here, I guess. There we go. Give me a couple little houses over here. I think this should be enough houses. I do like that they have the front of the building indicated with arrows. You guys will know that that's one of my harping points when it comes to building games, is for some reason with building games, they never put arrows on the front side of the building. And I find that arrows, man, arrows are the good stuff right there. Uh, we do spawn into the game at the beginning of like, I think like we're kind of like in the middle of winter right now. 
We're in month. Yeah, we're in January, so people are gonna be a little cold and chilly for a while. They shouldn't die. That freaked me out when I was doing my test play because I was like, "Oh my god, they made me start out in the middle of winter." Uh, but like, honestly, it seems to turn out okay as long as you stay true to the course. They're grabbing some ore down here. That's what the black stones are. The gray stones are just gonna be stone blocks. You can see a synopsis of all of our resources over here and on the side. If you're familiar with games like Banished, this will be like a pleasant drink of water. You'll just be like, "Oh yeah, I identify everything instantly." Uh, we have the happiness of our citizens. If they have high happiness, you get bonuses like faster work efficiency. Uh, you get better chances to have kids, stuff like that. Health levels also help out with that. That's how long. So apparently we get a buff right now to how long they can stay out and about in the frontier doing tasks uh, before they end up having to go back to their house to eat and replenish their strength. And so we've got a couple of houses going on in. We've got, I think it's four people to a house. And so I may have overbuilt houses right here, but I think it'll be okay. The other thing we probably want to do as well is get some farm fields up. The planting season starts in March. And so I feel like it's a really, really good idea to just go ahead and do that. However, we do have a lot of people that are doing a lot of random tasks right now. So I can't guarantee that the farm fields are actively going to get done at a time and or rate that I find acceptable. Oh, they are done. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, we start out with lettuce. Okay, we got some Latucci out here. All right, let's put the Latucci in there. The Latucci has been thrown into the soil, and soon we will be awash in the Latucci's, dude. All right, so we've got three more houses ready to rock. Those are going to be going. It looks like they're building that one right there. I did overbuild houses, I think. Actually, maybe I didn't. I think we actually built exactly enough houses. Nice. I'll take that. I don't know if they're going to start planting anytime soon, but when we get to March, you should see them march their way over here to build us a new building. It looks like they are delivering some of the things we need to these houses. I think it's just going to take a little while for it to get finished off. So I'll speed it up for right now because like this first year, they give you enough resources in this game that I sort of feel like you don't have to rush. And I actually like that a lot. Like a lot of games, they hit you with both barrels straight out of the gate. Uh, whereas this one, I like that they give you a little bit of a buffer so that you're guaranteed to survive like X amount of time while you kind of muddle your way through it. But if you've played Banished, it's not really a muddle. You've got a pretty good idea of what it is you're doing and where you're going. As we accomplish tasks, this little building is going to fill up with blue. When it gets up to the top, we get a development point that's going to allow us to unlock a new kind of building. And there are quite a few, actually. Uh, every single one of these is basically a building and there's... A lot to the game for an early access game normally when I come into early access city builders like this I expect for there to be very very little technology to research like they're just letting you play around with the basic Legos of the game uh, but in the case of settlement survival there's actually quite a bit to bite down on in here uh, it looks like they want me to add a few more houses so I guess I'll add like another two right there we have enough resources to do it. I should probably send somebody out to mine a little bit of stone. And so we can do that. Go mine a little bit of stone. We've got plenty of iron for right now, so I think we'll be okay. I do like that you can harvest stone and iron by default. You don't need any specialized buildings to do that. I've always been a fan of Vanish style deconstruction, which is you just rubber band box an area, they destroy it, and then you get resources. I never li like, it's not that I don't like it, I guess, it's just that I prefer it this way, versus how some games you would have to put like a, a camp in here that would then pick these up right here. Um, I, I like it when you just have the free ability to go and pickaxe the things you want to pickaxe in the freedom of your own time. Look at you, Latus. Look at you, Latucci. You guys are killing it out here. All right, so some other things we probably want to start looking at. It would probably be a good idea for us to get a gatherer's garden. I think I would probably start out there. So let's cap off this road right here and put a gatherer's garden right there. This guy's going to go out into the hinterland, and they're going to pick up all these little plants out here, everything from mushrooms to herbs, things that allow us to cure diseases, stuff like that, because people are going to get sick with time. Uh, what does that mean? Fuel reserves are low? Okay, so we're going to need to chop some wood pretty soon, too. So let's maybe think about the possibility of doing a... I don't need a logging camp. I need a sawmill. There we go. The sawmill is going to allow us to make firewood. And so I need to get this rotated. Otherwise, I'm going to mess up the spacing. Oh, I need a fishery to go right there, though. Okay. 
Uh, we'll put that right there so that we have kind of a road running this way. And then we could put a well maybe over on this side, possibly. That's a little cramped. Maybe I won't put the well right there. Maybe I'll put the well like right over here. There we go. That seems like a good spot for a well. I think we placed it well. That's all that uh, I know about that situation. All right, so we got 15 wood going in on that side. We've got our little herb garden over here so that we can get ourselves all ripped on the nice forest marijuanas. And I'll probably clear out the remainder of these trees over here just to give myself a little bit more space to mess around with. How many idlers do I have right now? We have seven idle people. Okay, so we've got a little bit of leeway for building new buildings and having the workers go work inside of them. I'm going to slow the game down for just a second because I don't want to bypass all the fun stuff too quickly. If you zoom in, you can get little details on the guys that are walking around. I think this game is using a pretty common Unity asset pack, actually, for its construction. I don't know how many of these things are customized and how many of these things, but I recognize these little farmers right here. I'm pretty sure they're from a Unity model pack. Hard to say, though. I can't zoom in far enough to see if they are. I might just be up my own ass right now. I don't know. I may be talking out of nowhere, but they look familiar. All right, so there is our production. We need to set this up to turn timber into firewood. That way we can start getting firewood stocked up because in the wintertime, people are going to get the coldness debuff and they've got to go back to their house and sit by the fire for a second to get rid of it. And if they can't light the fire with firewood, then they just stay cold forever. And they end up looking like Arnold in Batman. Uh, we get 400 coins, apparently, for that. 700 coins for the fields. Wants me to do a standard field? I don't think I need a standard field right now. I'm just going to take the $1,100 you gave me and retire because basically I'm rich. $1,100. It's more money than I've ever seen. Time to go get myself a double wide and clock out on life. Um, the other thing we can probably do is I feel like we can probably put a hunting cabin like somewhere. I feel like a hunting cabin probably does its best work if it's actually in an area with things to hunt. I don't really see any critters around though. Well, there's some there's some boofalators over there. Yeah, dude, let's uh, put the hunting lodge right there and maybe they'll go shoot some buffaloers, dude. See if we can knock over some bison. But I'm trying to diversify my food sources for right now. We do have a lot of food on our little docket. We've got 1,200 food. It's all rough food. Uh, there's a difference in this game between refined food and rough food, but I haven't gotten to the uh, refined food part of the game yet. We do have four development points that we can play around with, and so actually we could go with like meat processing right here and get a butcher shop. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's get that. And then we can also get salt, which will allow us to open a salt workshop, and later on we can turn it into a curing workshop. That sounds good. Uh, construction over here. Unlock the masonry with the laid stone road. It will increase walking speed by 75%. Yeah, let's do that. And then we've also got a sawmill to make planks. And I think that's a really good idea too. So we'll take that. Uh, I do know that planks come up pretty early in the game from my test plays. All right. They're bringing in the Latucci's on that side. That's almost done. Uh, what other fun stuff can I possibly put out here? Uh, well, a logging camp is an okay idea. I don't think the logging camp is the worst idea that anyone's ever had. Just to give us like a nice little trickle of goodies. We've got the laid stone road over here. Oh, we've got tunnels and bridges and things too. You can actually do kind of like civic engineering. I like it. Okay, cool. And it looks like there's decorative stuff, so like if you're into customizing your territory and you want it to have like a particular theme, it looks like that's definitely something that can be done. I don't know if the decorative structures make people happier or they make them feel as though like the area is more populated, but I do like the idea of like little knickknacks and stuff that I can place around in order to make the area seem a little bit more enlivened. Uh, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and put in our roads. Let's see what that's going to cost me. Uh, the roads are actually a one space. Oh. Do I have like a painting tool? Is that what this is? Ah, uh, there's our painting tool for nicer roads. Okay. Yeah. Put in a... Oh, it just instantly happens? Nobody has to dig that? Oh. Actually, it looks like somebody might have to dig it. I might be being a little bit overly generous with my stone right now. Oh, yeah. Looky there. There we go. They're digging out the road right there. 
it says it costs one stone, but I haven't seen our stone really go down this entire time. So that'll be nice. I actually like that they give you access to sort of like improvements like roads and stuff very, very early on in the game. Uh, I do wish that like, so one thing I've always really liked about Foundation. Foundation is like the city builder that I'm really looking forward to. One thing I like about Foundation is how when they walk around it tears down the grass and converts it into compacted dirt. And so they develop like these natural little ant trails all over your society by taking the path of least resistance. And then what I like to do is I like to plan my entire city around that so that like, the American style of building when it comes to city design is very square. We have grids, and that comes from the old way that parcels were plotted out. That's actually intentional. The reason why everything in the United States is a loose collection of squares that are all mushed together is because there's this thing called township and range. And it was basically the way that they measured land like 200 years ago in the United States, and it parcels up land into little, basically concentric matryoshka squares that are comprised of more squares down to like a square the size of the ground you're standing on. And that's how you used to purchase land and whatnot. And so if you ever wondered why American cities all have like square blocks that are like perfectly planned out and like everything is very much designed to be like rhombic, that's why. Uh, because people would buy a plot of land and it would quite literally be like a square. Uh, and so there you go. Uh, but anyways, in the European style with the old cities that are like, you know, 2,000, 2,500 years old, those were mostly just built either around a water source, around a hill that was defensible, or they were built along the paths of least resistance and it just kind of grew over time, over thousands of years. And I find that in Foundation, if you follow those little footpaths and you just kind of build around them because that's where your little guys want to go, you get like these really cool organic looking cities uh, that look like people just flatly moved in and we're good to go. All right, so our Herbalism Lodge. Actually gathering a lot of stuff, including tequila agave. Okay, so we might have some Tequila up in here pretty soon. Hopefully you guys are excited about that. Tequila for you and me. Tequila is one of my favorite drinks. Tequila and brandy. And those are my two drinks. I don't drink very much, but when I do, I virtually guarantee you it will be tequila or brandy. Uh, let's see. So we got a forester. We got a hunter. We got a gatherer. I, don't, I do actually kind of want to play around with the orchards. But, because I grew up in an orcharding town, I grew up in a city when I was a kid that everything revolved around the orchard industry. Like, every other block was like a fruit packing plant, or like a cannery, or something like that. Uh, just every fruit and vegetable you can imagine was grown in my hometown. Just endless, endless trees, just full of apples, and full of pears, and full of, you know, oranges, and just... Everything you could imagine. Our farmer's market was kind of a banger where I grew up. Uh, so we've got, has the same function of the sawmill, but works better. The old ways work better. All right, well, we could put in a sawmill right here at the end of the street. Like, we've got, like, this perfect space for it. Yeah, let's do it. We'll put in a sawmill. We'll start developing some planks. I don't know if we're bringing in enough wood to support that, but, I mean, there's plenty of forest around here. We can just chop down more trees. It's no biggie. Uh, how much wood have they produced? 30 wood. So they actually don't produce that much wood per year. We also only have two workers left. So we may get ourselves into trouble with this building. I may have to suspend its production when it gets done because we just don't have enough people to go around. Everybody's got a job. Everybody's doing something. Dick's over here with the water. You know, like we've got Jay. He's over here just hunting all day long being like, yep, giving off his turkey call and just... You know, that's my turkey call right there. I got a pretty good turkey call. I grew up turkey hunting, so like, you that. Like, I, got a, I got a pretty good turkey call, man. I've been told that my turkey call is pretty good. Turkey's kind of dumb. That actually works. If you go out into the woods where I live and you do that, turkeys will show up. Turkey's kind of dumb as a thumb. They are not a smart animal. Uh, they will show up and they will get got. So apparently we got some buffalo meat and some leather out of this guy. So that's good. I like that. I wonder if there's anything I can squeeze into that little area right there. I do wish that I could take this and move it. I would like a move option for buildings. So that like you click that and then you can just drag it to another spot. And then there'd be like a brief progress thing as like workers work on it. And try to get the build to like move to a new spot. I'm always a big fan of being able to kind of like move things around. From what I can tell... Our happiness is good, but our public health is low. 
And it says to add a clinic. Does a church help with happiness as well? Hospitals, herbs, soaps, and bathhouses. Okay. Clinic was on that list too. I can't fit the clinic in over there, which is kind of a bummer. But I can put the clinic right here. I guess it's a church. So, like, historically, it would be kind of the last destination in town. Churches tend to be at the end of kind of the final road with old cities that were built, like, you know, pre-1900. So, like, if we were going for historical accuracy, it'd probably be, like, right here. So that everybody in town could see it at the end of the road. But if we're going for organizational purposes, I'll probably put it over here. Yeah, let's do that. We're also going to have to track down some more wood. So, I think it's not the worst idea to chop down all those trees right there. I don't think it's a bad idea to start clearing in this direction, since that's where I'm planning on going. We're going to leave the trees and whatnot up over here. But it looks like these guys work kind of slowly. If I had 12 or 20 building kits, I could raise their... Oh, no, I can just make the building stronger. Okay. But every building has an upgrade slot, and you get kind of like these general purpose building kits. And if you have the general purpose building kits, uh, you can add basically a mod to the buildings to make it function better or to make it hold more people or to make it... There's actually kitties for these right here. If you look, see, you can install a kitty, but like you need to have two kitties apparently to install them inside the house and it helps your people with stress relief. I feel like my cats are a source of more stress than less stress, but I'm not going to argue the point. I'm willing to accept that kitties are pretty awesome and when they make roomly noises, it makes me feel good. Therefore, I accept the roomblies. Uh, we've got some extra firewood. That's great. Really glad to see that. Over here, I'll probably have this road branch down this way. We'll put in another suburb over here with, like, another well on that side. Uh, once I have planks up and running, we can finally make fisheries, which means that we can have fishy mans go out and grab ourselves some pescado out of the water. So that'll be nice. Some pescaderos. Is that a fisherman in Spanish? I've been, I've been working on my Spanish. Where I live right now, everyone speaks Spanish. And so, like, I've been practicing now. I've moved in, like, a year and a half ago, and I've been trying to get it back. I used to be really good at Spanish. I took, like, six years in high school and college. And then I moved to a place where nobody spoke Spanish for, like, six or seven years. And so you just kind of, if you don't use it, you lose it, man. That's just the fact of the matter. You don't use it, you lose it. There's the cold debuff I was talking about a little bit earlier. Sawmill, um... Oh, we can actually have it produce fuel, and we can have it make planks. Yeah, make planks. Although, the idea of using this to make firewood is an interesting idea, and one that I am passively interested in. It seems like it's just a better version of the wood chopper. It does all the stuff the wood chopper does, but it just does it more gooder. So, it's possible that we don't need that building anymore. I'm watching our food consumption right now. It looks like we've eaten about 300 food thus far going into December. And so it is possible that we're going to have to track down new food solutions coming into the next year. Let's go ahead and we'll put our road in down here, just kind of guiding where all of our development is going to go. I'll put in the fisheries first over here, and we'll see what room we have to play around with when I swing it around. But we're up to 20 population, which is great. We've also got another development point. So we can maybe get some new stuff. Oh, and it looks like we unlock passive buffs as well as we go deeper and deeper into certain trees. That's pretty cool. Uh, construction tech does sound nice. Material recycling sounds pretty good too. So I'm gonna truck down this way. We're gonna work on we're gonna work on construction a lot so that we can build a little bit faster. Since nothing really is gonna be happening during the winter time. This music right here. You know the song from, like, the first season of The Walking Dead when, like, Rick sees that crawling zombie and he's like, I'm sorry this happened to you. <laughs> like, it sounds like that song. Like, you know, like, whenever anything emotionally devastating or transformative happens in the popular hit TV show The Walking Dead, it has that one song. It's like, ooh. Like, it's got that song. That's what it sounds like to me. I think they're using the exact same synth preset. <laughs> Apparently we are having transformative experiences right now and the game developer requires us to feel a somber feeling and contemplate our current circumstances. Uh, we've got our fishing boat over here. Have I made any plonks, did? How are we doing on plonkinators? I have 21 plonks. That's good. So I need 30 plonks in order to make a fishy man's. But 
Oh, they want that to be like way out on the water. Okay, so I'm kind of, I need there to be more water rather than less. So there is like a good spot for this to be. I just got to find it. So that's a 64% right there. That's a 54%. I assume that they can't share a ring would be my guess. Yeah, my guess would be that they, I wonder if I can build like a jetty or something that I can put this out on so that it gets more efficiency. Is there? There is a bridge, but I don't know if I can build a building at the end of it. So yeah, I need some kind of jetty or something if we want to get really good efficiency out of our boats. But for right now, we'll put you right there. Yeah, it reminds me of that Walking Dead song. That's been in my head like the entire time we've been playing that. Like, I don't know why, but that, it just triggered that memory really, really. I'm sorry, this happened to you. <laughs> hey, we made it to the next year. I am somewhat curious if the trees regrow. Uh, that is one thought that I have, is doth the trees regroweth. It may be an okay idea to put a road that goes out this way and then put another. Yeah. Maybe put another over there, like another forester. I think I may indeed do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still laughing about I'm sorry, it happened to you. <laughs> like, I don't know why. That's like been rattling around in my brain the entire time we've been playing this, and now it's making me laugh. Is that a logging camp? That's a forester. Okay. Apparently our doctor's name is Dick. Dick has made a life change. He's no longer... He went from... Ain't that just the way medieval society works? Uh, Dick went from being our local... I think he was a lumberjack. Now he's our doctor. So, you know, if you got any major problems, go see Dr. Dick. He'll take care of you. Ew, there's cholera and there's measles too? Oh, I don't like that. Okay, apparently we got to worry about, like, diseases from antiquity as well. I'm also out of stone, so we may want to investigate how we alleviate that. It looks like we've more or less picked through most of the stone that's in kind of our area of influence. So, with production, maybe it's not production, it might be resources. Oh, we got to unlock it. Do I have another point? I do have another point. Okay, so we can go for a stone pit right here. And I think that sounds like a really good idea with where we're sitting right now. Uh, we only have one person working there. I don't think we have any idlers, so we just got to wait for our population to grow. Uh, in all honesty, it's just going to be a bit of time until we can go out and do our jobs. But yeah, it's a settlement survival. I'm actually pretty happy with it. I've had zero bugs. I think the UI is tastefully arranged. Like, I think they did a good job with the UI, making it look accessible, minimal, while at the same time it looks like a UI that someone's put effort into. Uh, I like the graphics. I like how colorful everything is. The sound and the music seem to be nice for a city-building experience. Uh, it seems to kind of grow at its own pace, and so, like, there's not, like, these moments of panic as you're playing where you're trying to figure out, like, you know, what the hell is going to happen to me? I'm already dying of hunger, and it's only year two. So they give you a little bit of runway right there, which I think is really, really awesome. Uh, so check it out, Settlement Survival. It's going into early access pretty soon. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today, we had Settlement Survival. Tomorrow, we will have something else hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Thanks for hanging out, and that's all I got for you. Bye, everybody.